मायसेल माधुरी मोडक असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन मॅथमॅटिक्स डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कम्प्युटर सायन्स आवेदा इन आमदार सिनियर कॉलेज नाव इन द पेपर ग्रुप्स अँड कोडिंग थिअरी वी हॅव सीन फर्स्ट अँड सेकंड युनिट नाव फर्स्ट युनिट वॉज इंट्रोडक्शन इन सेकंड युनिट वी हॅव सीन डेफिनेशन ऑफ ग्रुप अँड सम एक्झाम्पल्स ऑफ फायनाईट अँड इनफायनाईट ग्रुप्स नाव वी स्टार्ट विथ द थर्ड युनिट दॅट इज फायनाईट ग्रुप्स अँड सब ग्रुप्स now how to decide which test uh, is applied it depends on the problem whenever some set h is a finite subset of group then definitely you can use finite subgroup test now see this example show that h is 1 minus 1 is a subgroup of g equal to 1 minus 1 i minus i under multiplication now here h contains only two elements so h is finite subset of g hence we can apply finite subgroup test now clearly h is subset of g at the same time h contains one so it is non empty so just we check for closure property now to check for closure property as it is a finite set we prepare composition table as we have seen in unit 2 now we write the members of h 1 minus 1 as heading row and heading column and the operation is multiplication now 1 into 1 is 1 1 into minus 1 is minus 1 minus 1 into 1 is minus 1 and minus 1 into minus 1 is plus 1 so observe the elements of this table all are from h only so we can say that h is closed under multiplication hence by finite subgroup test h is a subgroup of g now second example prove that h equal to 0 bar 4 bar 8 bar is a subgroup of z12 under addition modulo 12 since h equal to 0 bar 4 bar 8 bar again it is a finite subset of z12 z12 is 0 bar 1 bar 2 bar 3 bar up to 11 bar containing 12 elements so h is finite subset of z12 hence again we can apply finite subgroup test so clearly h is a non empty subset of z12 so you can skip that step just take the closure property so prepare the composition table for h 0 bar 4 bar 8 bar in heading row and in heading column now on z12 the operation is addition modulo 12 so using the same operation we prepare the composition table so 0 bar plus 0 bar 0 bar 0 bar plus 4 bar 4 bar 0 bar plus 8 bar 8 bar as it is commutative directly you can write the column also now 4 bar plus 4 bar 8 bar 4 bar plus 8 bar is 12 bar which is 0 bar in z12 so this element again 8 bar plus 4 bar is 0 bar by commutative property and finally 8 bar plus 8 bar is 16 bar which is 4 bar because if we divide 16 by 12 then the remainder is 4 now see these elements all are from h only so h is closed under addition modulo 12 hence by finite subgroup test h is a subgroup of z12 so actually finite subgroup test is very easy so if h is finite subset of given group then just prepare the composition table using the operation defined on that group and then if it is closed with respect to that operation then immediately you can say that h is a subgroup of that group now these are some examples with infinite group prove that 2z equal to 2n n in z is a subgroup of z with respect to addition now here we cannot apply finite subgroup test because 2z is an infinite set now what is 2z so it is 2 multiplied by n where n is in z so we are multiplying all integers by 2 so z contains 0 1 2 3 and so on minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on now multiplying every element of z by 2 we get 2 into 0 0 then 2 4 6 8 and so on minus 2 minus 4 minus 6 and so on so it is an infinite subset so we are not applying finite subgroup test so we can use either one step or two step subgroup test now we will use two step subgroup test so clearly 2z is a non empty subset of z 
as it contains 2 into 0 equal to 0 element. Now, 2z is non-empty. Now, next is closure property. That is for a comma b belonging to 2z a star b. That is a plus b is again present in 2z. And then next is inverse property. So, to prove closure property, we will take two elements a and b from 2z. But every element of 2z is in the form of 2n. That is multiple of 2. So, we can write a equal to 2m and b equal to 2n for some mn belonging to z. Now, a star b is a plus b here because operation is addition. So, a plus b equal to 2m plus 2n which is 2 multiplied by m plus n. Now, as m and n are integers, m plus n is again an integer. So, it is in the form of 2 multiplied by some integer. So, this is an element of 2z. So, for any two elements a, b in 2z, a plus b is again in 2z. So, 2z is closed under addition. Now, next property is inverse. So, again consider one element a equal to 2m in 2z. Now, we have to find inverse for a. That means which element should be added in A so that we get the identity element 0. Now it is 2m. So if you add 2 into minus m which is an element of 2z in 2m then we get 2m plus 2 into minus m is equal to 2 into m plus minus m that is 2 into 0 which is 0 which is same as 2 into minus m plus 2 into m. So adding 2 into minus m in 2m we get the identity element 0. So inverse is 2 into minus m for a equal to 2m. Thus inverse exists for every element of 2z. Hence 2z is a subgroup of z. Now next example is determine whether the given subsets are subgroups of a given group justified. Now till now we have uh, seen the examples in every case H was a subgroup of G. So that was show that type examples. Now here we have to decide whether H is a subgroup of G or not. So answer may be yes or no. So if it is not a subgroup then we have to give why it is not a subgroup that justification and if it is a subgroup then in that case using proper test either one step or two step or finite subgroup we have to show that H is a subgroup of given group. Now here in given group is nothing but G and the set which we have to check for subgroup is nothing but H. Now first is H equal to 0 bar 1 bar 2 bar of additive group Z4. Means we have to decide H is a subgroup of Z4 with respect to addition modulo 4 or not. Now see here H contains only 3 elements that means H is a finite subset of Z4. Hence to check for subgroup we use finite subgroup test. Now we prepare composition table for H with respect to addition modulo 4. So 0 bar plus 0 bar, 0 bar, here 1 bar, 2 bar. Then as addition modulo n is a commutative we get same column here. Then 1 bar plus 1 bar, 2 bar. 1 bar plus 2 bar, 3 bar, same here and 2 bar plus 2 bar, 4 bar which is 0 bar. Now observe that all elements are from, no, all elements are not from H because if you observe here there is 3 bar appearing which is 2 bar plus 1 bar, 3 bar and it is not present in H. And so H is not closed under addition modulo 4. Hence, H is not a subgroup of Z4. So, you have to observe carefully whether all elements are from H only or not. So, 3 bar is present in Z4 but 3 bar is not present in H. And hence, H is not subgroup of Z4. Now, second is set of odd integers of additive group Z. Now, odd integers means it contains 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, minus 1, minus 3 and so on. So, H is an infinite subset of Z. So, we cannot apply here one finite subgroup test. So, either we have to use one step or two step subgroup test for checking. Now, 
as one is present in H, H is non-empty and clearly it is subset of Z. Now for two step subgroup test, first property is closure property. So we consider two elements from H. So let A and B are present in H. It means A and B both are odd integers. Now operation defined on Z is addition. So we add now A and B. Now A and B both are odd integers. So what is A plus B? See, you can take particular odd integers. Suppose A is 3 and B is equal to 5. Both are odd. Then what is A plus B? 3 plus 5 is 8, which is an even integer. So, actually, addition of any two odd integers is again an even integer. So, A plus B is an even integer. And so, A plus B is not present in H as H is a set of odd integers. So, addition of any two odd integers is not as odd integer we are getting. So, closure property fails here. That is, H is not closed under addition. Hence, H is not a subgroup of Z. As first property is not satisfied, we are not checking for inverse because even though that property is satisfied, H is not a subgroup of Z. Now, third, Q plus the set of positive rational numbers of R star, the multiplicative group of non-zero real numbers. Now, Q plus is the set of positive rational numbers. That means it contains all those rational numbers which are greater than zero. So, here we are not taking zero and negative rational numbers. And R star is the set of non-zero non real numbers. It is a group with respect to multiplication. Now we have to check whether Q plus is a subgroup of R star or not. Now Q plus is an infinite set. So we cannot use finite subgroup test. So again we apply two step subgroup test. Now as one is a positive rational number, one belong to Q plus. So Q plus is non-empty and clearly Q plus is subset of R star. Now first property is closure property. So consider two elements from Q plus. Let A, B belong to Q plus. Now the operation defined on R star is multiplication. So A multiplied by B. Now A and B both are positive rational numbers. So their multiplication is again a positive rational. It means A into B is present in Q plus. So Q plus is closed under multiplication. So, first property is satisfied here. Now, second is inverse. So, we consider one element A from Q plus. But as it is a positive rational number, it is in the form P divided by Q, where P and Q are integers Q not equal to 0. Now, in R star with multiplication, identity element is 1. So, to find inverse of A, we have to find some element B such that A into B is equal to 1. For example, if it is 2 by 3, then 2 by 3 multiplied by which element is 1? So, it is clearly 3 by 2. So, for A equal to P by Q, in the same way, there exists 1 upon A, which is Q by P in Q plus, such that A into 1 by A is 1, which is 1 by A into A. So, for every element A equal to P by Q in Q plus, 1 upon A is inverse of A in Q plus. For example, if it is 5 by 7, then its inverse with respect to multiplication is 7 by 5. So, in this way, every element in Q plus has inverse with respect to multiplication. So, both the properties are satisfied. Hence, by two-step subgroup test, Q plus, that is set of positive rational numbers, is a subgroup of multiplicative group of non-zero real numbers. Now, one more example, this is actually very important to define the subgroup generated by A from which cyclic group is defined. Let G be a group and A is an element of G. Show that H equal to A to the power N, N in Z forms a subgroup of G. Now here G is not a specific group, so just we consider G is a group with respect to some binary operation, say star. So as group is not specific, we don't know whether it is finite or infinite. So, we cannot use finite subgroup test here to show that H is a 
subgroup of gene. So we use again two step subgroup test. Now first H contains powers of A only and A is an element of G. So clearly H is subset of G. Now as A equal to A to the power 1, this element is in the form of A raised to n where n is an integer. So clearly the element A equal to A raised to 1 is present in H. So H is non-empty. Now, first property is closure property. So, we consider two elements from H. Let A raise to M, A raise to N are members of H. Now, as G is general group, we are considering star as a binary operation on G. And with respect to that operation, we show that H is closed. So, consider A raise to M star A raise to N. So, A raised to M is A star A star A M times and A raised to N is A star A star A N times. So, it will be A to the power M plus N. So, M plus N is again an integer. So, by definition of set H, this is an element of H. So, H is closed under star. Now, second property is inverse. Consider one element A raised to M in H. Then a raised to m raised to minus 1 is equal to a raised to minus m, which is an element of h again because the power of a is again an integer. So every element in h has inverse also. Hence, by two step subgroup test, h is a subgroup of G. So, what is this subgroup actually? The subgroup a raised to n, n in z is called as the subgroup generated by a and is denoted by this symbol as it contains all integral powers of A like A raised to 1, A raised to 2, A raised to 3 and so on, A raised to 0, A raised to minus 1, A raised to minus 2 and so on. So the subgroup which contains A to the power n, n in z is nothing but the subgroup generated by A. Now see the next example. Find all subgroups of Z12 with respect to addition modulo 12. Now see, Z12 contains the elements 0 bar, 1 bar, 2 bar, up to 11 bar. So, which are 12 in number. Now for every group G with respect to star, there are always two subgroups. One is the identity element only and another is group itself. So, these are improper subgroups. So, first we write the improper subgroups of Z12. Now, in Z12 with respect to addition modulo 12, 0 bar is the identity element. So, H1 equal to singleton 0 bar and H2 equal to Z12 itself. These are always subgroups which are improper subgroups of Z12. Now using the previous example, now we find subgroup generated by each element of Z12. Now we know that a to the power n is a plus a plus a n times. But here it is addition. So a plus a plus a n times is nothing but n multiplied by a. Now we start with the second element. As first element is 0 bar which is identity and 0 bar raised to n is again 0 bar for any n. So, consider a equal to 1 bar. Now, we find powers of 1 bar continuously till we get the identity element 0 bar. So, 1 bar raised to 1 is 1 bar. Now, 1 bar raised to 2 is 1 bar plus 1 bar as the operation is addition which is 2 bar. Similarly, 1 bar raised to 3 is 3 bar, 1 bar raised to 4 is 4 bar, 1 bar raised to 5 is 5 bar and so on. 1 bar raised to 11 is 11 bar. And when we calculate 1 bar raised to 12, it is 12 bar which is equal to 0 bar in Z12. Now why we are stopping this procedure here? Because if you consider 1 bar raised to 13, then it will be 13 bar. 13 bar is same as 1 bar. If I consider next power 1 bar is to 14, it will be 14 bar which is same as 2 bar. So, what we are getting? We are getting again the same answers. It means here cycle gets completed. So, from 1 bar is to 1 to 1 bar is to 12, continuously we are getting the answers which are different. But after getting 0 bar, if you consider the next powers, then you will get the same answers in the order. So, what are the different elements by considering the 
power 1 bar is 2 and we are getting here we are getting 0 bar 1 bar 2 bar up to 11 bar so this set is complete z12 so what is the subgroup generated by 1 bar it is entire group z12 similarly we find a subgroup generated by 2 bar now again find the powers of 2 bar till we get 0 bar so 2 bar is to 1 is 2 bar 2 bar is to 2 is 2 bar plus 2 bar 4 bar 2 bar is to 3 is 2 bar plus 2 bar plus 2 bar 6 bar so so 2 bar is to 4 is 8 bar 2 bar is to 5 is 10 bar then 2 bar is to 6 is 2 bar 2 bar 2 bar 6 times it is 12 bar which is 0 bar so we got 0 bar here so we stop that procedure now what are the different elements we are getting by taking 2 bar is to n it is 2 bar 4 bar then 6 bar 8 bar 10 bar and 0 bar so form one set containing these elements so this is nothing but the subgroup generated by 2 bar we call it next subgroup as h3 similarly we can find a subgroup for every element so subgroup generated by 3 bar it is 3 bar 6 bar 9 bar and 12 bar which is 0 bar and this subgroup and subgroup generated by 9 bar are same similarly subgroup generated by 4 bar and 8 bar is 4 bar 8 bar 0 bar subgroup generated by 6 bar is 6 bar 0 bar subgroup generated by 2 bar and 10 bar is same and subgroup generated by 5 bar 7 bar 11 bar are same so we are getting as h1 then h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 these are the subgroups of z12 because some of the subgroups are same so we are getting these subgroups which are distinct subgroups of z12 now next theorem which is very important theorem intersection of any two subgroups of a group is again a subgroup in other words if h and k are subgroups of a group g then h intersection k is also a subgroup of g now again here g is any group with respect to say star h and k are any subgroups of g then their intersection that is set of all common elements of h and k is always a subgroup of g let h and k be two subgroups of g now to show that h intersection k is a subgroup of g we use one step subgroup test now first of all h intersection k must be non empty subset of g see h and k are subgroups of g so h is subset of g k is also subset of g so h intersection k is again a subset of g now which elements are definitely present in h and k identity because they are subgroups of g it means they are groups so in every group identity element is present and it is unique so whatever is the identity element of g same is the identity element of h and k so e is present in h e is present in k which is identity element of g so e is present in both the sets h intersection k so h intersection k is non empty now we consider two elements a and b from h intersection k and we have to show a star b inverse is present in h intersection k now a b belong to h intersection k implies a and b are present in h and a and b are present in k because intersection contains common elements so a and b are present in h as well as in k now see h and k are subgroups of group g so again using one step subgroup test in reverse way because whenever h is a subgroup of g then in that case for a b in h a star b inverse is present in h so we get here for a b in h and a b in k a star b inverse is in h and a star b inverse is in k by using one step subgroup test now as a star b inverse is present in both the sets h and k we get a star b inverse is present in h intersection k so we have started with a and b as arbitrary element of h intersection k and finally we got a star b inverse is present in h intersection k so by one step subgroup test 
H intersection K is a subgroup of G. Now, even though intersection of two subgroups is a subgroup of that group, it is not necessary that union is again a subgroup. So, here the question can be asked in this way. Illustrate with an example that union of two subgroups is not a subgroup or the question can be asked as show that the union of two subgroups need not be a subgroup. So in this case we have to give an example in which H and K both are subgroups of that group but H union K is not subgroup of G. Now we have seen that Z with respect to addition is a group. Now we consider its two subgroups and show that their union is not a subgroup. Now H equal to 2Z. So it is 2M M in Z. That is all the elements in Z multiplied by 2. So 2 into 0, 2 into 1, 2 into 2 and so on. 2 into minus 1. So we are multiplying every integer by 2. Whatever is the set is H. Similarly K equal to 3Z which is 3N N in Z. So multiply every element of Z by 3. So the set will be 3 into 0, 3 into 1, 3 into 2, 3 into minus 1, 3 into minus 2 and so on. So these two sets are subgroups of Z with respect to addition. Now what is H union K? H union K is the set of all elements which are either in H or in K. Now H contains all elements which are multiples of 2. K contains all elements which are multiples of 3. So H union K contains all elements which are multiples of 2 as well as all elements which are multiples of 3. So 2 is present in H because 2 is 2 into 1. Same way 3 is present in K because 3 is 3 into 1. But 2 plus 3 is 5 which is not in H union K. That means even though 2 and 3 are present in H union K as they are present in H and K respectively, their addition 2 plus 3 is 5 is not present in H union K. So H union K is not closed under addition. Hence we can say that H union K is not subgroup of Z with respect to addition. So remember this example that in Z with respect to addition, H and K are subgroups of Z plus, but their union is not a subgroup. Now, next theorem is every subgroup of an abelian group is abelian. Now, abelian group means group together with a commutative property. So, if you consider any subgroup of abelian group, then it is abelian. So, we consider G as an abelian group and H as any proper subgroup of G. Why we are considering proper subgroup? Because if it is a improper subgroup then it is obvious because improper means either H is G or H contains only identity element. So both are trivially abelian. So consider H as any proper subgroup of G. Now to prove commutative property we consider two elements A and B from H. Now as H is a subgroup of G, H is subset of G. So, AB in H implies AB is present in G. But the group G is abelian group. So, for AB in G, A star B and B star A are same. That means for AB in H, finally we got A star B equal to B star A. So, H is abelian as commutative property satisfied by elements of H.